to Football HQ here on TAB's Facebook Live page uh, with myself and Miles Davis. Evening, Miles. Good evening there, young Ricardo. I just want to comment before we start, actually, on uh, our two assistants, uh, mm. the glamorous George and the less glamorous Ant. They're both hipsters, uh, well, trying to want to be hipsters, and the beards, we... There's something about the beards, whether they've shaped them differently today or not, or whether they've been doing a bit of manscaping. I'm not yeah, quite it looks sure like that, George has manscaped a, his face. That's just our personal private dig. Let's get on with the business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Now, of course, uh, Football HQ is the name of the show. And if you uh, don't have a TAB account, but you would like to open one, then go to the TAB page, tab.co.nz, and uh, you can just chuck 10 bucks in that account. Use the promo code FOOTBALLHQ, and we'll throw you another 20 That'll give you $30 to start betting with in your TAB account for the World Cup. And Miles, we also, every show, live here from Andy's Bar at Sky City, give away a $50 um, voucher for the okay, TAB. I have to keep reminding them, it's not us that gives it away, it's the <laughs> TAB that gives it away. So, well, but we do, and um, it's Ricardo's turn to come up with a question. I think he's come up with quite a doozy today, actually. All right, then, here's the question for you. Just Your answer's just below. Kylian Mbappe scored two goals for France today against Argentina, becoming the first teenager to score two goals in a World Cup match since who? OK, so that's the question. We will uh, take uh, a, a variety of answers throughout the show, and then uh, Ant's our capable or less than capable assistant. George is the case. And if you want to troll we'll us, choose, if we'll you want to troll one. us, just put your messages in there on the TAB face underneath this particular live streaming yeah. video. Last week, get rid of the loudmouth Davis. That's right in there. So thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's far better than being ignored. Yeah, and I would say we've already had a comment uh, saying I see you got rid of the hard working one in reference to Mr. Devlin who was here last time. Yeah, we did. Well there's only so much BS we can have on this particular <laughs> show. Talk of BS. This, do a little review of, of the games mm. that we had this morning and if like Ant you overslept because you'd had a bender at the local rugby club <laughs> then you would have missed out on I, I, I've got to say how many of us I, I know that you I think you had one all for the second game yeah um, or for the first game I was going for a nil all draw maybe in both games and then going to penalties or maybe just one goal in there we had 10 goals in two games yeah it was fantastic uh, France four Argentina three now I had kind of written Argentina off and really, France were the better team for most of yeah, it. I had them yeah. down to win 2-0, but that was a fantastic game of football. I think Argentina actually might have shaded possession in the game they as did, well. Yeah. But France always looked more confident when they had the ball. And I, I think maybe the, the problem they might have, or the issue they might have, or concern, is the fact that they conceded so many goals. And to concede three goals against an average Argentinian Argentine, side yeah. might mean that you know, the, the blunt end of the, of the uh, ship is a little bit... Maybe Rocky taken in water. Yeah, well, I think they missed Kishelny because he was going to be, you know, the number one centre back for this World Cup, but he got injured in that Europa Cup final, and that, that was the end of him. So uh, they may miss him. And the other thing I think, which will probably help France going forward, is that they don't have. There's not many teams that are going to come up against who have Lionel Messi, right? And what they'd done, they'd played Blaise Matuidi and Kante on Messi, yeah. and that kind of left a bit of a bit of space in front of the defence. And then we saw that with Angel Di Maria with the shot he had, the, the amount of time and space he had. I don't think you'll see too many. Going yeah, no one closed kind of them down. Of, Normally, no. someone would have been there closing them down. But they were both. They were both on Messi. Yeah, but it really was. I, 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 you know, one of the best knockout games I think I've seen in a very, very long while. I, I'd agree with that. Somebody Up there actually, with that England Cameroon in, in 1990. That was a good game. Time. Somebody I saw on uh, on Twitter today said they thought it was the best knockout game at a World Cup since the 1970 final, Brazil, uh, Italy. Yeah, I, think, I suppose te technically it is. I, I, I enjoyed the Brazil Italy game in 1982. I thought yeah, that was a great Paolo game. Rossi. Special game that one. Well, Not it, was. Palo, it was Palo Rosso. It was, yeah. I get confused with him and Badger. So all those Italians look the same to me. <laughs> Sorry about that, Ricardo. <laughs> they all look um, like they, they all look like that. They're all this good looking. Um, I, yeah, but that was yeah, it was a fantastic game yeah, and a great way to start the round of sixteen. Oh, it's what I really enjoyed as well. Though, if you get a chance to have a look at, it, or you've already seen it, that have another look at that. Kylian Mbappe's uh, second goal. It reminded me of the Carlos Alberto goal in 1970 in the mm, final. Yeah. Just the way that it was knocked around. Not quite as laconic as that. It was far, a little bit sharper, but it ends up out there. It's a beautiful through ball from Giroud and, and finished by Mbappe coming up on the far post. So M I, I, I Mbappe's pace is frightening. How, and not just the pace, the fact he's got the composure and the touch as well. You know, he absolutely destroyed yeah, Argentina. I, I think his price has just gone up from 185 million. Mm, yeah, somewhere, definitely. Somewhere northward to that. I, well, the other game as well, though, I um, I was I was expecting the the Uruguayans to be niggly, dirty, cheating, um, and that's their good point. Yeah. 
but they so, were reasonably I mean, well behaved. To me, I mean, for me, the Portuguese are the European Uruguayans. I thought they were going to be the same, you know. The players I've got, I thought this was going to be a real battle. Um, I thought there were going to be a lot of yellow cards, and I thought we were going to end up at penalties at nil all or one all. But it didn't happen. They played some good football, and probably the early goal to Cavani definitely helped. I think that's the same because of France, there was an early goal as well. So yeah. I. I if you get an early goal, these games are really open. I was expecting, we were talking to Winton Roofer this morning, and he said, you know, he was telling his old man, don't, don't get excited, don't get excited. There won't be that many goals. They had a nil all, extra time, maybe penalties. He had to, and he also picked Argentina and Portugal to win, so don't listen to what Winton's got to say. But it, 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 Ronaldo seemed to, I don't know if he just run out of steam, basically. There's only so much carrying. Of you the can team do. That he could do. Yeah, and he didn't get a lot of help today. Like Bernardo Silva wasn't very good. Uh, Guedes, I think that they started up front instead of Silva. He didn't really offer him much support, so he was doing a lot of it on his own. He was doing a lot of heavy lifting. And the guy that I thought would get some some love was uh, Gelson Martins, who we saw out here for Portugal at the Under-20 World Cup. Yeah. Been linked with Arsenal, been linked with a few. Um, didn't even get five minutes off the bench in the Cup that I remember, so uh, it was a bit of a disappointment for Cavani me. Cavani and Suarez, though, were, were dynamic and that, and Cavani's finishing. If he's... He didn't look too happy um, when he went off injured. No. He didn't look too happy about it. I'm, injury, I'm wondering yeah. whether a calf, how long is he going to be out? He was crying at the end of the game. I don't know the excitement they got through or whether a mixture of that and the fact that he realises that he's going to miss out on any future glories that the, that you got, the Uruguayans might have. And if, and if he is missing, then really it does favour the French that quarterfinal because... Um, he and Suarez is such a good uh, combination and I brought this up this morning on, on the radio show Two Miles that Cavani and Suarez born in the same village born three weeks apart from each other and have all, had, both of them have scored in three different World Cups now they work so well together and what was, the, what was his stat man what was the other stat that you dug out of the archives oh, about yeah. how many of Cavani's goals for Uruguay have been assisted by Suarez. Yeah, he scored 44 goals for Uruguay Cavani, and Suarez has assisted 12 of them. So it gives you an idea of how well they work together as a partnership. Yeah, very dangerous. And if you've got those two, and their defence isn't the worst either. No. Well, that's so, uh, Jimenez and Godin. That's yeah. the Atletico Madrid central, defering, central uh, defensive pairing, so that's pretty Yeah, handy well, they as well. know each other's game. Yeah. Um, and if they need to be ruthlessly efficient, <laughs> as only the Uruguayans they, can be, they, they will be. <laughs> So that's basically it for, for the yeah. roundup. I wouldn't mind. The thing that I've really enjoyed about the World Cup, though, is the, um, the off field humour that gets sort of, uh, sort of I don't know, um, birthed out of it, born yeah. out of it. I'm trying to put my teeth back in to get the right words out of it. <laughs> but actually, sort of emanate and, and come out of this World Cup. And it's been brilliant on the park and absolutely superb off of it. And Neymar. Oh, Neymar against. Uh, Serbia, he, he, he got he got a, a, a little kick. I mean, you, you'll see it. He got a little. It was a tap. It was nothing. It was barely even a foul. I I thought, and uh, the guy got a yellow card for it. I tell you what, he rolled and he rolled and he rolled and he rolled and he rolled straight into. And he rolled box. more than Bob Marley. And he with did. the internet is such, and there's some clever people out there. I've no idea how to do. It. I can just about get the link. But look at this. Oh, and he gets popped. Look at that. That's brilliant. That wasn't the one that we meant to have, George, was it? No. 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 He does, oh, you don't have that other one. Oh. Okay, George, thank you very much. George giving us a throat. Yeah, He's I can't wait till no. we get to Prince no. Pratt. I've just got no, another no. edition. Yeah, write that How do you spell George? <laughs> we're meant to have the one. That, go on the internet and look for it, because George hasn't got it. He's lost yeah, it somewhere. But it'll be on the internet somewhere. The one where he rolls and rolls, goes yeah. down the motorway, knocks people over, knocks buildings down down the side of a mountain, all sorts. Uh, but there's not just Neymar as well that's popping up, but uh, there's a bloke who actually wore this very well. Uh, and we were talking about uh, Batshuayi, the Chelsea striker on loan at Dortmund this season. Look at that. Belgium had just scored. He went to celebrate by knocking the ball into the back of the net. And he demonstrated some real Chelsea form there by not finding the back uh, of the net. Serious. He scored a few goals for them, but they're all scrappy goals. West Ham were actually involved in... Sorry. Uh, we're involved in... Um, oh, is that West Ham? I thought you were wearing an old Howard KFC shirt there for a minute. <laughs> Howard Stern shirt. Anyway... <laughs> He, um, he doesn't really finish that well for me, and that probably shows exactly why. I mean, he's right there, he's got the whole net to aim for, and he hits the post. Yeah, he owned it, though. He, afterwards, he tweeted out. He tweeted out that clip as well and said, I knew this was going to happen as soon as I got back to my social media. And he owned it. He was, he was quite funny about it, actually. But, and you know that saying, you know, really, that, that when there's a big sporting tournament coming, you never plan your wedding around it. Yeah. Well, people obviously didn't, li didn't listen, but they did get into the spirit, and um, this... 
these are these Russian brides on the beach in their wedding dresses. Having a go, look at this. A bit of Having a game of football. The World Cup of Weddings, this is brilliant. I do. <laughs> I do. Mate, I'll tell you what, if you're um if you if your wife's gonna go and play a game of football after your wedding, and she's you know, she's definitely a keeper. Wouldn't that be bloody br- yeah, that would be brilliant actually. So yeah. say, look, we're doing a World Cup game, I, I, but we've got to finish early because I'm kicking off at three. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now we need to preview, of course, uh, the rest of the round of sixteen games that are coming up. There are six more starting tonight, of course, and the first one of those involves the host. And I'm, I'm imagining a bunch of those brides will be supporting them as well. Russia, they play Spain, and on paper, Miles, this looks like uh, a bit of a lay down mazier. This is Spain all the way, isn't it? Uh, you'd, you'd say that, but uh, other than, I mean, okay, the, the Russians fell over against Uruguay. They've actually not Uruguay. I'm going this way. They no, actually, no, it was Uruguay. Yeah, it was Uruguay. I'll tell you what, I've had no sleep for two and a half weeks. I've watched 70,000 games, and I'm really starting to get confused like an old man. They <laughs> fell over there, but you wonder, they'd already qualified. You're wondering how much effort went in there. Were they just holding a little bit back? The crowd has really lifted them. They scored a lot of goals. They scored eight goals in their first two games. Spain haven't exactly set the world alone. No, they haven't. You're right. And, and I'm just wondering whether there's an upset here. We're always expecting it. I mean, you look at the odds there. Russia yep. at six dollars, draw three sixty-five, and that's in ninety minutes. That's ninety minutes. So if you think uh, extra time penalties are an option, that, that uh, may be an that, option. That looks a bit of value. Spain at a dollar mm. fifty-five, I suppose for a, for a hot favour is, is reasonable money to go in there. I, I just wonder if it's as a lay down as here. Having this World Cup has thrown up a few surprises. Yeah. Is it a lay down as Well, I, I think Spain two 0 is kind of where I'm sitting on it. And I, if you're looking for some other options outside of the head to head stuff. Spain uh, against this team, they, they're intricate passing. They're the Russians at the back, quite old. They're, they're an old team at the back. Uh, they're maybe not the quickest. So Spain to get a penalty in this game, to score a penalty in this game, is paying $5, which I reckon is not a bad little investment. It's a great... If you actually go through the, um, the TAB website and have a look, and I've said this before, the, the different options there are phenomenal. There's really good... And we'll see in our little betting competition later on some of the stranger ones that, that uh, you can actually Thanks. get from there but yeah. I think penalties there's been a hell of a lot of penalties in there VAR has been introduced I don't know whether that's resulted in more well, or whether referees like are, are more liable to give them because mm-hmm. they think that they can be overturned if they've got it wrong yep I, I don't know and then when they go and look at it even though you think that wasn't that hard I mean Mbappe's one this morning you could have an argument sometimes you might have got away with that the, the penalty that he yeah. drew this morning. True. So they're well worth going for the penalty. And you've had you missed out though, didn't you? What was the game that you that you didn't well, take the penalty one? I, the, well, I had uh, I had uh, penalties in a couple of games and not uh, uh, and there was one that there was two penalties in. That was the England one, wasn't yeah, it? It was, it was Harry England Kane one, yeah. that he didn't take. Yeah, there was, yeah. I took penalties in Uruguay, Russia. Actually, that's the one I took penalties in, All and right. I took them in Uruguay, Egypt as well, and it didn't happen in either. But there you but go. Russia. They've only played six games. Uh, Spain have won four, two draws. But they did play each other last November in a friendly, and it was a three-all draw. Mm. Whether that's got any bearing on it, I have no uh, idea. Uh, but I just uh, thought I'd throw that one in. Yeah, there. and there's actually um, daily specials. There's, if, if you go to the TAB website and you look at where all the World Cup betting options are, there's daily specials. And one of those, they're calling it the hat trick, even though it's two bets and not three. But it's uh, it's for two players to that score. Up, George? Yeah, I think, I think so. Um, it's... Um, it's uh, two different players to score in the two round of 16 matches, which are tomorrow morning, which is Spain, Russia, the other one, Croatia, Denmark, which we're about to get to. So if you want it, there's a bunch of options here. One of those, Diego Costa and Luka Modric, both to score in the game, five bucks. Look at that. Um, so I reckon that's uh, that's that's no, worth, uh, no, sorry, no, ten Modric bucks. is ten. Mandzukic is Mandzukic five. Mandzukic is five. Yeah. So there's a few options there too, which are the daily specials combined. I've got to, to like say. That. That I would of those ones there. I think you're better value with Diego Costa and Ericsson than you are with Diego Costa and Modric. Well, the Modric Just has mo- scored two two from three this World Cup. Yeah, he has, but he's not he's not renowned as a, a prolific goal scorer. No, but he's uh, under the new Croatian manager. He's scored a goal every second game. Uh-huh. So he's, well, he's picking up, you know, been, and he is the penalty taker. I'm just saying that my preference would be, I think they're both good value, mm-hmm. but my yeah. preference would be, I think I get better value out of Ericsson. Well, let's go to that Croatia-Denmark game, which is the late kickoff tomorrow morning. Uh, the Croatians come through their group really well, really comfortably. They gave the Argentinians a hiding 3-0, of course, we remember that. Uh, and they take on the Danes, who finished second in France's group, and they got over Peru and Australia. 
the Danes have Christian Eriksen, he's, he's vital to them, as vital as Modric is to Croatia. The difference for me, Miles, on this is that Croatia have got a lot better supporting cast. I, I, without a doubt, that they are an all rounder. They've looked good so far in this tournament. They were great yeah. against Argentina. If they can re- reproduce that form, they should cruise through. I think the Danes are going to put up a stiff resist- resistance. Mm. Like a lot of those sides around there, you know, the yeah. Swedes are the same. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. I. I don't. Th- I think they've both beaten each other twice. Um, 98 in qualifying, they drew one all, and then Denmark won three one. In fact, that 98 World Cup, they both had good World Cup. They did, yeah. The Croatians very unlucky not make it all the way through to the final, um, and Denmark I think got knocked out in the quarters by Brazil. I'll say Brazil off the top of my head. It might have been Holland, uh, but it was it was a close game and a really good game. So I think. Yeah, that's 20 years ago, but the, historically they've had decent clashes, two wins each out of the five times that they've met. So yeah. it and could like, go either way, but Croatia are undoubtedly a better side. And that, if you want a punt on a, on a favourite, a dollar seventy is for me is good money. Yeah, it is. So the draw at three twenty, Denmark five bucks. Another um, dipping into kind of something outside of the head-to-head bets, though. For me, I like this. Croatia in their three games so far have been drawing at half time and have gone on to win the game. If you take draw at half time. And Croatia to win, it's paying 3.85. So uh, I think in a game that'll be probably 1-0, 2-1, something like that, that's not a bad option. It is. Very good value there at the TAB. I think the, the, loss, the lack of sleep for the TAB bookies has taken its toll because <laughs> I, there's, a, there's another couple of nice little odds coming down later on. And we will get to those shortly. Um, now, this game here, if, if you... If you just look Brazil, at it on Mexico. Paper, yeah, Brazil, Mexico. You've the, the game that he hadn't mentioned that he was yeah, talking about, yeah, but we'll yeah, tell you what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah Brazil um, would be favourites for most people. But I had a look at the head-to-head history of these two teams. Twenty-five percent of the games they've played, Mexico have won. So, uh, and, and almost Mexico, another twenty-five percent they've drawn well, as well. Yeah, so so they, there is, and they drew. Actually, they played each other in um, two thousand and fourteen in Brazil, nil all draw at ninety minutes. Yeah. So. That was, I think Brazil went on and won that. Was it, no, it wasn't penalties. I think it was extra time. They won that in extra time. So uh, that's something to wasn't consider. Wasn't it a group game? No, they were in the was same group. Was it Colombia? Oh, no, Colombia right. they beat on extra time? No, you're right. Anyway, no, but, it doesn't matter. Because the group it's, was Croatia, it's, Mexico it's and Japan. You can look it up. That's yeah. what Google's for. Yeah, goggle. Um, so there you go. Brazil, $1.45. The draw, 4 bucks, which I reckon is great value. And, and that's, again, remember, that's 90 minutes. That's 90 minutes, yeah, yeah. So, so if it goes into extra time, then that bet's void. Yeah, because, I mean, the Mexicans, they showed up really well against the Germans, of course. Didn't do so well against the Swedes. So they got the job done against the Koreans. Yeah. But they know how to play Brazil. They play them in the Copa America all the time. So yeah. playing Brazil doesn't doesn't overawe them like it might some other teams. They, they know how these guys work. They know how to shut them down. And to be fair, you say Spain haven't been on fire. Ooh. Brazil haven't really clicked yet either. If it wasn't for Coutinho... They would have been really struggling. Brazil. I think we've gone on too long about Brazil. Let's try and knock through the rest of these games. Then right. we've got Belgium against Japan now. Um, two wins, um, one loss for Belgium, and two drawn. I think they, won, they had three wins. This is another one now. Last year they played again in November in a friendly, um, and it was a one 0 win to Belgium. But they did play in the World Cup in 2002 with a two all draw. Yeah, and I think I think that this Belgian team, though, have shown us that they can take advantage of weaker sides, and this Japanese side isn't the greatest side. Defensively, they're going to struggle to contain Lukaku. Yeah. So they're not the strongest, biggest team. They're, they're, they're fit, they run a lot, they pass, you know, pass and move really, really well to Japanese, but they struggle to put the ball away at the sharp end, and I think... You know, Lukaku's just going to be too much for him yeah, to handle for I, me. I, I think so. So I, I quite like that at the... Um, Lukaku to score a dollar ninety is probably it's, yeah it's good money know. it's very good money and we'll talk more about that coming up as well don't you worry about that so uh, yeah Belgium for me and it'll be a few goals I think I'm th- I'm picking three 0 for this game what do, what do you reckon I'm hoping it's four and I'll tell you why in a while <laughs> Switzerland Sweden this one on paper is the closest game it is the is the one the bookies are struggling to split uh, split as well. Two teams who are very evenly matched. I know you've got some uh, some stats on this as well, Miles, about how these teams have gone against each other. You can see there, Switzerland two dollars fifty for the win. Sweden three bucks. The draw two dollars eighty. Very rarely do you see a, a book like that with uh, such good value for for a punter, and also the draw being under three dollars. Yeah. And let you know, it's just you don't see that very well. And I'm. I look at that, and it, it, for me, it's the hardest going to pick. They've played each other twenty-seven times, ten wins each seven draws so I, I, I'm for me 
Shakiri. Shakiri is the one I think is the key. I don't think Forsberg is the big star for the Swedes. He hasn't really stamped his authority on it yet. Maybe the next World Cup might be his might be his time. But Shakiri for me is a match winner. There's, you mentioned there's a little bit of a injury Dodgy cloud hemi. over him What's at the moment. Mark on his hemi? So we'll but see. it's only a little hamstring, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. <laughs> it should heal pretty quickly. He's a small guy. I just think Shakiri a bit, so I think 250 on a Swiss is, is reasonable. And if you want to have a look at options for games to go to penalties, this is one I think uh, both teams are paying about $10 to win on penalties. So if you've uh, got a theory on that, then I think this is going to be a tight game. It's going to go past the 90 minutes. And finally, mate, uh, the one that you're most excited about, of course, is Colombia versus England. Now, your old mate Paul Merson, um, I read his review on Sky Sports UK of this game, or preview, I should say, and he was saying, I haven't seen much from Colombia this World Cup to worry England. I think Merce might need a prescription or something. He, I, I don't know. What I he's think he's been hanging out with Diego Maradona for, <laughs> for too long. I see a lot to worry about about Colombia. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know whether England were. If I'd have been the England manager, I'd like to have seen us just play the first eleven and just play every game and try and win every game and keep the momentum going. You've got seven games max in the tournament. Are you going to go on and win the thing, or are you going to just sort of ease off? I don't know. Just yeah. I, 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 it may. I, Southgate might turn out to have been right in, in resting all those players. I'm hoping he's right, but Falcao worries me. Um, and now that he's found a bit of form at yeah. the back of the net, they can um, Quadrado, Quintero, you know, yeah, you Quintero, really like who's him. playing in the ten as well. And Davison Sanchez, I reckon, could be a big influence on this game. He's Harry Kane's teammate. He's exceedingly quick. And he has been a star at the back for Colombia so far in this World Cup. I think he could really um, shut Harry Kane down. It's yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait. So I think he's going to chop him down and give a penalty. Or maybe even Sterling might actually front up and do something for a change in a bleeding game. Are yeah, I wouldn't Raheem? hold your breath. I like, wouldn't hold your breath. Um, I was there actually in 98. The only time we played, we played them five times. England have never lost to Colombia. And I was there in 98 in Lens in Northern France when we beat them 2-0. Um, again, that's 20 years ago. But I, I've, I've got to believe that England are going to win. And this for me, at two bucks... Great value. Yeah, it's good money, two dollars for if you if you believe that England are going to do it. But for me, even better is three eighty five in a market that I. And this is a game I'm struggling to pick a winner. You know, I think it's really even. And for Colombia at three eighty five, I think that's really good money. Again, I, I look at that and I I just think that the lack of sleep has got to the bookmakers' heads, <laughs> and they've been either that or they think it's Christmas, yeah, and they're just the giving generous odds on there. So whatever it is, thank you. Yeah, thank indeed. you. Thanks thank very you. much. Now let's get to our wake up a winner and where this is at at the moment now if you've just tuned in for the first time you don't know what I'm talking about Miles and I throughout this, uh, the, the series of uh, Football HQ which is every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 throughout the World Cup we have three bets each $10 bets one has to be a favourite under two bucks one two to three dollars and one a bit of an outsider over three bucks we see who makes the most money at the end of it whoever loses gets a tattoo of the winner's choosing and to be fair, at the moment, Miles, you've got a pretty good I have, lead. I have, although this is my worst week so far. Look at that. If it wasn't for Tunisia beating Panama, which was Ricardo's winner, he's gone up in the stock. His stocks are rising, and they are. but you're still a fair way behind, son. Yeah, I'm about... At $81.50 or something like something that. Something like that. So uh, I need some... I've got to catch up. So you're a fair way behind, but there's still plenty of time to go. Now, my picks this week... I've sort of spread it around a bit. I was tempted to go all for England, but I didn't. A dollar seventy, Croatia, Denmark. I think that's good money. The Croatia are definitely, in my opinion, a better team. Dollar seventy is, is give me good value for that, so I'm taking that. Colombia, England, two dollars. I've already mentioned that. That's ridiculous money um, for for a favourite. And Belgium, Japan. I was going to go De Bruyne to score, which is an option you can take. De Bruyne to score, Belgium to win was five dollars, but I went for more than three and a half goals at $3.20. All right. Well, there's some interesting... I mean, like that Croatia at $1.70, I get that. I think that's good. England, two bucks. Like I said, that for me, that's a really hard market. That's a hard game to pick. But I think the Belgian game, there will be goals. It's just whether or not there'll be four. Uh, OK. Well, let's have a look at this one here, this treacherous dog well, trying I've, to wind me up. I've gone Lukaku to score, all right, in this game against Japan. I'm pretty sure he's going to get on the score sheet. He's got four goals in the tournament already. He's on form. $1.90. I think he will bully the Japanese defence. I think that's good money. So that's my favourite. 
uh, my two to three dollar option is Belgium to win and over two and a half goals in the match. We've already talked about that. That paying two dollars thirty for me is a gimme. So I'd definitely be on that one. And then Colombia versus England. This is the one where I've gone pushed the boat out a little to try and catch up with Miles Falcao, who's uh, already scored his first goal ever in World Cup history for him and Colombia to win in this game. Like I said, a game that I think is 50-50. It's paying six dollars, and I know you'll hate me for it, but I had to pick it, and I need to make up some uh, some ground. Hey, it's, it's not, I wouldn't expect anything less from a treacherous dog, Ricardo. So yeah, carry on, mate. And I remember Falcao. He had Falcao to score in the last game, and when he got subbed five minutes ago without scoring, yeah. I cheered. It was the filthy, loudest cheer absolutely the filthy. Now we've got a couple of uh, uh, some feedback here. If you want to say anything to us, if you've got any ideas for which tattoo we each other should get, any of that stuff. Just comment below uh, or any comments you like. Uh, we're, we're quite happy to take those. And Jason Scott has said, Miles, your tattoo for Ricardo should be Rene Higuita, the brother from another mother. So that's actually uh, not a that bad is a, call. That is a good call. Yeah. The only problem is that that would be quite a nice one to have. Like Higuita is a bit of an icon. So I'd, if you're going to give a suggestion, something nasty. Like that, <laughs> like that lovely chap who suggested that I should get the Tottenham crest tattooed over my heart. Uh, that lovely guy. That is, something like that. That is do. definitely uh, among the favourites uh, for me. And the winner of our question, of course, we give away a $50 TAB uh, voucher for your, uh, for your account as well. Uh, the b- question at the beginning of the show was, Kylian Mbappe scored two goals for France against Argentina this morning, uh, and that meant that he was the first teenager since who to score two goals in a World Cup match? The answer is Pelé in the 1958 World Cup final against Sweden when he was just 17. 17, yeah. Just a baby. And who was the winner? Trey Soparua. So well done, Trey Soparua. That uh, is actually my nom de plume. Is it? I was texting my... <laughs> I was texting on my Facebook. <laughs> wonder if he's any relation what, to Barry's, looking. Barry Soparua. I don't know. Yes, anyway, it could be. Could be. Anyway, uh, but uh, well, Ants is going to get the in touch with The potato family. Oh, yeah, maybe. Ants will get in touch with you, mate, and sort that $50 bet out for you anyway. Um, so there you go. That's where it's going at the moment. And if you have any other suggestions for what tattoo Miles should get, what tattoo I should get, chuck them below. Any other feedback you got is welcome as well. Uh, talking of Ants, um, we sent him out with all white Tim Payne to do a few challenges so that we could just... Sort of get the, the involvement of the New Zealand wider public um, and they got up to no good um, last week. Lads, welcome back to another Head to Head Challenge here with Tim Payne. We're here with Darian, is it? All the yeah. way from the States, Absolute Rooster and Tim Payne. They're going to be taking part in the Steer Challenge. Who's got the determination, the stamina and also the courage to get through this one? Follow me. Lads, let's get into this, the Steer Challenge. Now lace up your boots. Lads, we're not actually running the stairs, this is pretty simple. I want you guys to stare at each other. I'm gonna tell you five pretty funny jokes and you're not allowed to laugh. Let's get steering. Lads, the first joke. What did the ref say to the chicken when he tripped over the defender? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even got to the punchline yet. <laughs> the answer was foul. <laughs> That's one to Darren. Yeah. The United States up over New Zealand. My partner broke up with me because she said I was obsessed with football. I'm really gutted. We were only together for three seasons. <laughs> no, I think that was a tie. That's great stuff. So. Why did the footballer get upset on his birthday? He got a red card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still 1-0. So we're three, we're three deep. That was another tie, it's good stuff. You can get you can get this to me. Which football team loves the ice cream? Eston Vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good it's stuff. Right. It's a double or nothing, okay lads. We're down to the final question. What is a goalkeeper's favourite snack? Beans on post. <laughs> Please, I'll pass. <laughs> That's a clear winner. Um, Darren, you've won the stare off. Congratulations, mate. No emotion. You are amazing. You know, where are you from in America? Uh, Colorado. Colorado, beautiful. Yeah, Tim Payne, hey, he's finally been defeated once again. Thanks, lads. Back to you. You just can't get the staff now, though, can you? Mate, well, as to paraphrase Blackadder, if you want anything done properly, kill Ant before you start. Sounds good to me. 
That was awful. Now I think George um, is in for that as well. Yeah. Now Joe Ringrose uh, has um, commented below. He's got a bet on Uruguay to be knocked out at the quarterfinal stage. Uh, he said he's put forty bucks on. It's paying one hundred and eighty. He wants to know if he should cash out at one hundred and eleven now. I'm reckoning you should stick with it because France would knock them out anyway, particularly if Cavani's injured. Your advice, Miles? Yeah, no, I'd go for that as well. Unless you need the money at $111 and you can treat yourself and get what you wanted without getting 180 There you go. So there and you I'd go. go for it. Go, come on. It's called gambling, mate. That's what, You've got to have a little bit of excitement. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. All right, mate. Now, uh, Prince or Pratt is your favourite segment of the it show. It is my favourite segment of the show. Um, first, Prince. Uh, we've got a couple of first. Um, Edinson Cavani. Uruguayan, two cracking goals this morning, basically finding the, finding his form at the right time. Unfortunately, it looks like he might be injured for the Uruguayans for the uh, for their next clash. Superb. Another two-goal guy that we've already mentioned, mm. Kylian Mbappe. Yeah, another um, prince. Great name, Mbappe. Um, who scored another two today and looked good around and drew the penalty as well, making a 70-yard sprint that frankly looked like Usain Bolt had suddenly run onto the pitch. It was superb. And, and he, also... Yeah, he's, um, he's come out and said he's giving all his match fees while playing for France away to charity, which is about 20,000 euros a game. So at the moment, 80,000 euros is given away to charity because he says you shouldn't be paid to play for your which, country, Which miles. is commendable. But might I point out that the whole of the England squad already do that and have done it for years. That Jordan Pickford's battling with Phil Jones for the ugliest, ugliest England player in the squad. <laughs> really, I'll just, that I'll is just some battle. That. that is some battle. That is some battle. Um, but also, now we uh, another prince, Ronaldo. Mm, yeah. Um, we had to bring him back in. Cristiano, look at that. Isn't it lovely? He's helping. Edison Cavani got injured in the game. You know, Portugal, Lizzie takes him off. And yeah, helping him off. It's what great a to prince. see. Great to see. What a prince. Now we come to Pratt. Yeah. Who's Ronaldo. Your first Pratt? What? Ronaldo. <laughs> Mate, seriously, don't try and con us. Oh, I'm Melbourne. You just wanted to get him out of the way so he wasn't wasting time when the medics came on and treated him. <laughs> it's the most see through paint. And if you ever watch that go all the way through, he sprints away. As soon as he's got him off the pitch, He's away, right. not a, you're right, mate, or anything. Right. None of that. He None did that. it as slow, as, as measured as possible. He just wanted him off the pitch. And if you want to do it properly, this is how you do it. When my, my mob played his mob in the cup and Herrera right. was fannying around, that is the way that you get a player off the pitch and get, get, get it's, on, it's a, it's amazing get on how, with a game. It's amazing how quickly uh, Herrera's calf came right after I, that, actually. It was, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. So, was. Mark Noble, thank you very much. One of my favourite moments of the season. Now, one of the other uh, Prats that we've got here is the former, or well, depending on who you ask, uh, FIFA president, Seth Blatter, who has come out and said he is still the president because he's not being voted out, he's just suspended. There's two presidents of FIFA actually present at the World Cup. The, the one that was voted in yep. and the suspended one. So he's still Sepplata. I'm still the president of FIFA. And the prize. I just want to buy prize things. Give Pratt. me an envelope and I'll give you anything. <laughs> um, and a couple of more Pratt's, just personal ones off in there. Any footballer who wears their socks above their knee. Oh, do you yeah, want me to give you some suspenders for that, lovey? <laughs> Don't do it. My kids try and do it occasionally to wind me up. Yeah. And the last Pratt evening, George. He only had 58 jobs to do and he forgot the clip of Neymar rolling down the street and down the motorway. And yeah, which, like well, so he was just telling us there he got one wrong by the, by the look of that finger signal. One yeah. wrong. Yeah, well done, George. Anyway, we'll be back next Sunday. Uh, sorry, next Sunday? What we'll am I talking Wednesday about? Wednesday. Even. Wednesday, yeah. Uh, we'll be Wednesday, 7 o'clock right here. For an update, we'll go through all the round of 16 games, preview the quarterfinals as well. Another $50 TAB bet to give away live here from Andy's Bar at Sky City. If you want to come along, have a beer with us afterwards, watch how the show's done live, you're more than welcome. Otherwise, tune in, make your comments below, and you'll see how much room of cl uh, climb back on miles. If England, if England lose to Columbia at Falcao score, I might be ill. <laughs> <laughs> Sick to the stomach. At least one of us is.